what's going on guys in today's video we are going to make a time lapse photo effect so what we're going to do with this is we're going to take four images of different times of the day and we're going to merge them together to create like one photo that goes from sunset all the way through to night time so for this one i will use four images but you guys can use more if you like i'm going to give you a link in the description to a website where you can download these images that we are using now so just to quickly show you, once you've downloaded it, you'll get it here and it will be inside of this one image here. So I'm on a Mac and I will open this by default using preview. I'm not sure if you guys are going to be on a PC or a Mac, but hopefully it should be the same process. But once you open this up, you'll see straight away that you've got all the different pictures inside of this one file from the different times of the day. So all you've got to do at this point is just find the pictures that you want just by selecting it and then just dragging that one down into affinity and just wait for that to load in and then you just keep coming back and doing the same thing with all the pictures that you want to do just drag them in so we'll take that one as well and it will open up on a different canvas to the one that we just dropped it on so at this point you're just going to have to copy this come back to the one you just imported and just paste it on top of that one so now we've got both layers Okay, so once you guys have got that far, I'm just going to come back off this and go back to my original. We will be here and we're going to have four images. So you can name this like I have if you want to. So I've got sunrise, morning, sunset and night. So first thing we are going to do is I want to divide this whole picture into four sections. So to do that, we're just going to grab our ruler. If you guys don't have your rulers turned on here, just head up to view and just go on to show rulers right there. So just gonna drag one from the side here on the left all the way to the end, just to see what the size of our canvas is. And this one is 5120. So I'm just gonna take that one off again. So we're gonna do 5120 divided by four, which is 1280. So I want you now to draw four rectangles at 1280. So we'll just draw the first one and we need that width at the 1280, like I said. Just pay attention to the width at the bottom there and nearly there so 1280 right there so all you need to do now is just copy and paste this one guys save you doing it four times so hit command c and command v to paste and bring it over and paste another one command v and bring it over and just snap this into place guys all the way along the canvas and the command v a final time just like that and there we go. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take these four rectangles and we're gonna group them together because it'll make it easier for us to do the effect. So select this top one and then just hold down shift and come to the bottom one and it'll select all four together. Once you've done that, hit command G for group and that is that bit done. Okay, so there are multiple effects we can do with this. The first one being is I'm going to try and just blend these all together. So to do that, we're going to mask these images right here. We're going to ignore the night one and we're just going to put a mask on these top three. So we'll start with this one. We're going to come down here to the mask, that little rectangle with a circle in there, and just put a mask on that one. Come down to the morning one, place a mask on that one. And once again with the sunset, we put the mask on that one. Okay, so we're going to use these guys as a point of where we're going to start blending these images together. So we're going to grab this first one, we're going to come over to the left hand side, we're going to grab our paintbrush tool, which is right there, and just, you want your opacity to be at 100 at this point, uh, your flow is fine at 50, you can turn it up if you want, and your hardness you want to leave it at 0 because you want it to be soft. Okay, so for those of you who are new to masks or don't quite know what they do, I'm just going to give you a quick rundown. So when you put a mask on top of an image like we have here, it basically hides or reveals what is underneath that layer. So if we start to paint on this mask now, it's gonna start showing this morning image underneath it. But at the moment we can't see anything because we are on the color white. So being on the color white will hide the image underneath, but if we change this to black, it will start revealing the image underneath, just like that. So if we quickly just start painting over this, you can see we've now gone from that top one to this bottom one. And if you make a mistake and you took too much off, it simply changes back to white and we can just paint that back in again to get our original photo back. 
So I hope you guys understand what I mean by that. Basically, a mask will hide or reveal the layer underneath it. So we'll carry on at this moment. And if you guys got any questions, feel free to comment. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to start painting in our layers underneath it. So we're going to select our first mask here. Please make sure that you are on the mask and not on the image. If you are on the image, it's going to give you that big blur right there. And that's not what we want. So just click back on your mask. So for this first bit, we are going to start here. We're going to get close to this center line here, but not quite on it. I want you to get to about here where we start to fade it together. So when you are ready to start, we're going to change our white to black so we can reveal what's underneath it. Remember, black reveals and white conceals. So once you guys are ready, we're going to come over and select your brush size as big or small as you like and just start painting close to that line, but not quite on it all the way and I want you to come all the way over to the right hand side and just keep going over it until you cover the entire image with the layer underneath it so you may have to go over it a couple of times just to ensure you've got it all and once you've done that you can just let go of the mouse and we're going to do the exact same thing on the mask underneath it so not the morning photo but the morning mask and this time we're going to start on this center line but we're going to come over slightly away from it and do the same that we just did and bring that across both images until you fill the image. And finally on the mask at the bottom, and this time just over to this line, but not quite on it, just a bit further over. And we just start painting that image in as well. So once you guys have done that, you can come over and turn your group off. And then we are left with that image right there, which looks pretty cool in my opinion. I like this effect. So. Basically, really, when you do this, guys, I hope you're going to use your own images because one is going to be unique to you and it's something that you can sell or you can create for clients, for instance. You can get a lot better pictures than this. You can combine more photos or less, whichever you want to do. You can simply go from nighttime to daytime with just the two images and just get so much more creative. OK, so that's one way of doing things. And if these are too harsh for you here, all we've got to do is just bring down our brush a little bit. We're going to come back to our original mask change our opacity up here down to around 30 maybe lower it's up to you guys and just start painting over this again and maybe give it like a little wiggly line kind of thing just to blend these colors in nicer almost like a snake until you're generally happy with the design that you've got and we'll just do this on all these masks just to blend these two colors together just so they're not so harsh It doesn't seem so important as you get down to the bottom here because there's not so much detail. And all the way down to your happy, you can make your brush bigger or smaller, it's entirely up to you. Okay, so before we carry on, you guys feel free to save this if you want, either as a Affinity Photo file or as a JPEG, whatever you want to do, just before we move on to this next section. So, okay, once you've done that or you're happy to delete what you've just done, we're going to move on. So all I want you to do now is we're just going to come over and grab our arrow tool and I want to delete these masks. So get rid of that one, get rid of that one, get rid of that one. So we're just back to where we started. And what we're going to do on this effect now is we're going to turn our group back on and we're going to open up the group. And what I want you to do is select each one of these individually and I want you to drag them inside of these rectangles. So we're going to take this sunrise, we're going to bring it up to you see that bar and just pull it over to the bar shrinks to the right and let it go. So now that is nested inside of that rectangle and we're going to do that on all four of these. So that one, that one and that one. Then we are left with this kind of effect, which also looks really good if you want to put this on your wall as a canvas. And once you've done this, you can come in and you can change your stroke if you want to make it bigger or smaller make it as big as small as you like i think roughly around 10 is probably good enough for this or you can just turn that off entirely if you don't want it you can also change the color of your stroke you can have it black you can have it red any kind of color you like so that is one way of doing this if you like that kind of effect another way of doing this is i'm just gonna hit command z and put this back to where we just started and just take these photos back out of that group. 
and do that multiple times till we're back here again. So once again, you guys can save that file if you want to before coming back and starting the game. So what we want to do here is now select our group. I'm going to zoom out a little bit at this point so I can see what I'm doing. And I just want you to come over here and rotate this 45 degrees. So if you hold down the shift key and start to pull to your right, that will snap into place. And there's our 45. And just drag that out just to cover the canvas. And then we're just going to grab this and we're going to try and center it using the snap lines of that green one and that red one, just like that. And you can see we're not quite on the edges here. So if you hold down command and just pull out one of these corners until you fill that canvas. So like that is fine. And we can zoom back in again. So what we can do now is the same thing that we literally just did. We're going to open this, but this time we're going to bring them back in again. Just like we did, but we're going to get a different effect now because we put that on that 45 degree angle. So now we've got it looking that way, which I think looks better than going straight down in my opinion. Once again, you can change the color of the stroke, you can remove the stroke. And whatever you guys want to do with that, it's fine. If you want to save this one as well before we go back and do another one, that is entirely up to you. But for me, I'm just going to hit that Command Z again multiple times to take these pictures back out of there. And I'm going to close that group again. And this time I'm going to zoom out again and just going to bring this back round, hold that shift key and let it snap again till we end up back at 90 degrees. And just hold your command again and bring this in till you fill the frame. And then just drag that out. Like that. And this is going to be the exact same thing guys. Apart from now we're going to have another effect of it. And just drag them back in again. See how easy this generally is. So there you go, we've got that same kind of effect again, but this time we've got it in columns like this. So it's entirely up to you if you want to save this one as well. There's one more final one I'm going to show you before we end the video. So I'm just going to Command Z again to go back and get them images out. But this time round, I'm going to go back to our original idea that we had. So I'm just going to drag this back round holding shift, back round to that zero degrees. And it's going to shrink this back down. Just like that. And it's going to hold down that command and pull this across till we fill the screen. And just bring that back up. So we've got our original one that we started with. Okay, and for the final effect, we are going to do exactly what we did to start with. Just drag these in. Just like we did on the very first one or the second one, I think it was. And once we're in there, that is fine. And all I want you to do now is just grab these top three, holding down command so you can select all three together. I want you to hold down shift and use your right arrow key and just move that across 50 pixels. And then we're going to do the same with these top two. Select those, move it across with your arrow key and your shift button, 50 pixels. Then we just choose that last one and just move that one over that 50 pixels. So this kind of gives us a tiled effect, which you will see on some photos in stores or around homes and stuff, which is always looks really nice if you put it onto a canvas, for instance, on your bedroom wall or your living room wall. So just to demonstrate, I just quickly put that together so you can see what I mean. So you can get the four pieces and they generally do slot together, but you just give that a little bit of a gap just for a bit of design element to it. But you guys can see that looks really cool. So just to quickly end this video now, if we just undo these gaps quickly, if you guys decide you want to keep this border in the middle, but you don't want to keep the outside border, then all you generally got to do is just come over to your corner, hold down command and just pull this out a little bit until you hide that white one. Just like that. So... There you go guys, there are five different time lapse photo effects that you can do, very simple. You guys can do this at home by yourselves, all you generally need for this effect is a mobile phone, a tripod and some patience. And you can go down and photograph your favourite area, your favourite landmarks, whatever you want to do, as long as you've got that time to sit there between maybe sunset and sunrise or whether you want to get just a day and a night shot. So you just need that two photos through the day. But the important thing is to keep that tripod completely still because if it knocks the alignment out, it's not going to work as well. 
So I hope you guys found this video useful. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Leave me any comments on any kind of subject you would like me to cover or teach you that you don't fully understand. And most importantly, guys, please hit that subscribe button as it really does help me out knowing that you guys are enjoying what I'm doing. So for now, guys, enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video.